Hello everybody. Final welcome to the DivKid discussion stage. We're here with Rides in the Storm, making some lovely bubbly synth sounds. So I'm gonna get out of the way for a minute and let you keep making lovely synth sounds. Good. And then we'll come up and talk about it. Nice, yeah. Me is Uwe George from Rides in the Storm. It's a company specialized to analog synth models, but we also make a digital units like the sequencer. You control everything here. And the special speciality is I think we make a discrete circuits, so we don't use common chips for VCO, VCF, VCA. Instead of that, we use uh, transistor cells or something like that for the technical audience, some information. Beside that, the units are quite compact and offer a lot of possibilities and very important, offer a good sound for affordable price. So that's the philosophy of the company. You'll listen just to the as told the new Royce model and are just mixing different units, sub oscillator, change of the waveform of sub oscillators. I mix the second VCO or put them in, in sync motors. And back in normal motors. Then the sequencer also controls some other units here. It's just a, a simple kick from a lo-fi drum sampler. And we add a, a higher generated from a right noise. It goes through a filter. White noise goes through a high pass filter from the new XCR ring modulator. They also offer a high pass filter. And with a low pass, we can change the resonance. So the white noise becomes a little bit metallic. The envelope just controls the decay and release. Now it's time to add a second oscillator. That's the new BOC. Controlled by the Kuichi envelope and an SED. The BOC oscillator, this one, also gives a lot of sub-oscillation and a, a wave folder and a ring modulator out. So it sounds, can sound really metallic. Now I'll show you a nice trick. The envelopes can go in loop mode, so it's a re-trigger, so we can generate really fast repetitions. Without programming this in a sequence. And this goes into auto rate and sounds like this.
Now I feed the LFO into the into the mixer and now it works as an oscillator. Let me find a reasonable frequency. Pre-rides in the storm, I think I saw you 2016, the first super booth with, did you used to work with MFB? Yes, I worked uh, 15 years for, with Manfred uh, for MFB. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you have a rich history of synthesis and modular prior to rides in the storm. Yes, yeah, the, the idea was uh, to build my own company and yeah, also Manfred uh, is not existing anymore, he died uh, a few years ago, so that means uh, it's time to make my own stuff. And uh, for sure, I learned a lot of things. Um, you know that time changes and also the, the market become more harder, but also I think the, uh, about quality, people expect much more. So you have to get quite deeper yeah. in the material. And, so, and finally, um, yeah. What I find really interesting from what I've seen over shows of you is you have things like sub oscillators that you can wave shape. Yeah. Sub oscillators on, os on oscillators are typically quite dumb. They're often just square waves. Yeah. What, what idea, where do those ideas come from? Is that from how you like to patch and maybe work with other modules prior to these ones? Um, are you just looking for something different? Oh. Um, oh, good question. Um, that's right. Uh, I, I found out that, um, that sub oscillators, I like on sub, sub oscillators there in, in phase. So it's good for bass sounds, it's good for techno, or not lose the phase with every note you play. It's not the same, uh, it's not the same punch. Yeah. Th therefore, sub oscillator is really quite useful. We know that from Roland SO1, SO, SO1. Yep. and they also have this mixer like here, so you can mix different waveforms, different uh, subs, but for sure it is a quite simpler unit. But the idea uh, is nice, because you can mix noise, you can mix uh, two different subs and whatever. And I found out that it's uh, interesting, uh, a waveform sounds totally different if you have a, a square and, and a saw, or you have a saw and a saw. Sounds totally different. Yeah. So, um, and this is not so complicated, make, make a, a saw from a square or whatever. So I just added this functionality or a triangle. They don't have so much uh, uh, overtones. So it's good for really deep bass sounds. If you have not, not so much noise in the composition, it's good to have some, something deep deep options. Um, yeah, that's the idea of the, to offer different waveform, you get different results. Because I find often with other oscillators I've had through my time in modular, that I might need to take the square wave into a filter, then get the filter to track volt per octave, so the pitch, uh, the shape stays relevant across the thing. It takes multiple other modules, but you're putting all these features in. Yes, that's right. Huh? Um, Everything has their advantages, yeah? I also understand the idea to have different models for each function. It, it brings you to another, uh, another solution. In, in another way, why not to implement it? Yeah? Yeah. So it's up to the user to, to have this version or this version. Yeah? So it's, uh, I like to, to offer what is possible, but important is that you can see. You see it and know what, what it means or not uh, diving through menus and whatever. So it, it should be not too complicated. And this is also the reason I have a wave folder inside. Um, some people like the, no the voice of wave folding, but it's not controllable from outside, just from inside. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but the other model, like the BOC, their wave folder now is uh, CV controlled from outside too. So there isn't difference between that model and that one. So this is a like compromise, but offer offer you the capabilities of sound, but if you want to go deeper in modulation from outside, then you need a single model. So, yeah, but the most thing uh, you cannot see, it's inside. Okay. Uh, like all the machines, uh, like software or hardware. Uh, the main difference, I think, is the architecture of the, the circuits. So that everything is 
it's discrete, so it works with transistor. They're really fast, but there are no circuits in, in, in the net, so you have to do everything from scratch. So um, that is the difference. The advantage of transistors are really, you, you see, uh, if you see an, an oscilloscope, the, the waveform is quite fast, so the edge is it's very sharp. That means that you have more brilliance. The same with filter or with uh, VCA. You have less distortion. Every distortion is clicking. This is, yeah, that, that means the sound is more soft. Okay. Yeah. If I want to have a distorted sound, we added an, an, an overdrive here. It's got more into, into yeah, this. But it's user controlled rather than yes. something that the circuit generates. But if you want to have a clear sound, especially out in, in the bass, a def, a def, defined sound, it's it's better you have uh, kind of this uh, clean uh, oscillators or filters or whatever. But this is kind of taste. This is just a philosophy yep. to offer this wide range of capabilities. Same with the, uh, with the um, envelopes. The envelopes are super fast. So it goes into your audio rate. If, if I check the loop, the loop goes to 6,000 hertz. Okay. So it's quite fast. What surprised me as well when I first saw these modules um, is that they're all quite affordable, but yet they're discrete. Is that not more work for you to work with discrete circuits, or is it just as simple to yeah, design? Yeah, it's more work. It's uh, around three years uh, development. It's more work, but uh, this is not the only unit I make with this technology. So we have single models. Next year I bring a standalone model, so I use the technology. So it's a, a mixed, uh, I would say, a mixed calculation. Okay. And I, I don't have a big office. I work from my home. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I work also with freelancer, with a, with a sequencer and all this. I try to save money in, and, and to bring a, a good value for the people. And after a couple of years, I think that it will work. But I could also uh, say this thing costs 1,000 euro with no problems. Yeah. yeah. But that was what you'd expect with discrete circuitry features that you're not seeing anywhere else. I, I would place it at a lot higher. Yeah, but... The musicians are poor, most of them. <laughs> it's admirable, it really is. So I try to offer the best for and that. You mentioned desktop units. Is that kind of long-term goal of the company is to cover both modular and non-modular? The idea was uh, with models, it's interesting. I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of models. Okay. Uh, if I met uh, Dieter Dropfer, uh, he were here yesterday or today also, the first time at Music Fair, and I told him, ah, I'm not a big fan of models. And he, he, he gave me a cable, and said, now you can start. A cable like this, uh, was like merchandise. It's interesting that I started to make models by my own uh, 10 or 15 years later. So um, this, this, the reason for making models is you can, you can start with single uh, units step by step. And it's not so cost intensive like a whole synth. Um, the another reason is that myself found more interest in, in working with models. So I saw myself uh, having fun uh, working with, with, with Eurorex and also, also my gigs. Uh, I start to make uh, gigs with, with, uh, with models. Uh, and so, so why not? And so it makes sense. But for sure, uh, it makes also sense to, to offer standalone. This is the next step. And that doesn't mean that I don't make any models anymore, but it makes sense to use the technology, offer people that need a keyboard or yeah, in different not ways. cabling or, or, or connecting and have, want to have a an, an delay inside or whatever. So this is, uh, I think, comes next year. Yeah, this, I think this is the most uh, interesting part of that I come from, uh, from, from the 80s. And I started with the MS-20, you know, with a real yeah. analog machine, and then... Uh, I, oh, I came, sorry, I'm not used to that. I came uh, really close to the Roland machines like GX3P, Jupiter A, Jupiter 6. I know all the machines, also the, the Prophet style. And I know, I know how that sounds. I know the, the architecture, the electronic they use, and the differences. And this is very helpful to, to know uh, what is inside, what, a, what a, a circuit can do, what it not can do. And often I... I feel that many people don't listen anymore because today the architecture is really similar. They use the same chips. They lose, lose often very cheap solutions because they have to compete with others. 
So do you see this as a complete rides in the storm system if you're now at the point of potentially moving into a desktop format? It's a complete system. Also, yeah, I make also cases. I bring it on the market next year or the beginning of the next year. It's very slim. You can put it in a, in a, in a laptop bag and can travel around with air in air or whatever yeah. <laughs> without any trouble. And the idea is to put everything inside um, and have a complete line. I, it, I doesn't mind if people using other models, I, I don't mind, but they have to fit in this, uh, this size. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only yeah. limitation. And, How um, deep is the case? Uh, uh, 35 millimeter. Yeah. Thinking back to MFB and the line of modules that they were, have you any um, kind of ambition to bring these discrete circuit ideas into drums and drum machines and different types of voices other than <laughs> yeah. kind of like typical <laughs> synthesis? <laughs> yeah, I have, the plans are <laughs> vast. <laughs> the plans are all <laughs> since years <laughs> under my bed. Yeah? <laughs> so yes, um, but a drum machine, I, I can tell you, it's not an easy thing. It's, it's expensive. Yeah, you need power supply, a lot of circuits, and a case. Yeah? And if you, it makes no sense make hundred. You, know, you have to make three or five hundred. And this is, uh, I cannot afford it. But uh, I start next next year with a model, a drum model, and this also the sequencer is prepared to okay to uh, to work in a, in a drum machine and also work on, on sampling and all this. So that means uh, if everything runs well, we, I present next year a prototype of a drum machine also. Yeah. Okay. The one thing maybe it's interesting is a, the next step is a, is a delay. I make a digital delay and it's also a looper, okay. quite affordable. For below 120 bucks, and uh, oh, wow. and the opposite is my old dream: make a a, um, a BBD delay with uh, maybe you know it is an analog delay mm -hmm. with 16 units. So the idea is not having long delay time. The idea have a, have a, a frequency range it goes up to 10,000 hertz. Also, in if, if the delay line is like 500 milliseconds or whatever. So and have this analog charm with better uh, with better frequency range, especially with synths, yeah? it's not stuff at 3,000 hertz. Yeah, and this, I, this is getting on my nerve with these analog delays. People like it, but I don't like it. Yeah. Ever, everyone like it, I not like it. I like this warm sound, but not the, the frequency range get cut it because of technical reasons. Yeah. I don't yeah. have to explain here. You don't want and the technology to yeah. restrict what you can do. And that is my idea. There are many pedals on the market that sound beautiful, but they're still cut the frequency around 3,000, 3, 3, 4,000 hertz. And this is not cool for synths, in my opinion. Okay. And this is another project. I'll show you next time. Yeah. I look forward to seeing the delay develop. Yeah. That's great. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you.